Hey everybody, welcome to Never Stop Building. I'm Jason and today I'm going to be starting on the process of upgrading my dream machine to be a flatbed utility truck. But before I do the upgrade, I got to do a bit of a downgrade. The thing is, because of circumstances, I have this gooseneck trailer I need to pick up and the flatbed that's going on this truck isn't going to be ready for several weeks. So we're going to do a temporary gooseneck situation, go pick up the big trailer, then I'll be able to pick up the flatbed and then I'll be able to put the flatbed on. All of this is so that I can go to Colorado to bring all my extra garbage back out here and sell the shipping container that's out there. Because I got a quote to ship the shipping container and all its stuff to Maine, I nearly fell out of my chair. Upgrading my towing and utility and trailering rig is gonna make life a lot easier in terms of picking up equipment, hauling projects to the job, and generally, uh, you know, gathering more detritus and fixing up my house in Maine. So let's get started. So I got this utility bed for a couple hundred dollars from the mechanic I used to go to out in Maryland. It was from an old irrigation company and they, they did sprinkler systems and stuff like that. Um, and then over the years, I've made small adjustments and stuff like that. Like I had to redo all the turn signals. Those were completely shot. I ended up I'll show you inside here. There's this whole hilarious wiring situation. And then the big upgrade I made, obviously you might be able to see, is this huge roof rack. So this I'm gonna be, you know, I'm gonna be sad to get rid of this. It's, I got all this steel salvage and it's this heavy duty roof rack. And I had probably 1800 pounds of Port Orford cedar beams up on top here. And you know, it had all the, it had the, the lights here and the little reverse cam and these plates to keep it from getting smashed and that all ran down. It used to have backup lights and a bunch of stuff, but the truck was stolen in Denver. They ripped off the roof rack, they trashed the interior, they stole everything out of here, which would be like the third time stuff was stolen out of here. And uh, so it's, you know, it's, it's sort of a shadow of its former self, but the big thing is I just don't really use this utility bed in its intended use. Like I'm not a service technician. I don't fill this with plumbing parts or electrical parts and go to jobs. It ends up just accumulating towing gear, hauling gear, straps, fluids for this, the leaking engine. And so these boxes end up staying pretty empty. The bed weighs a bit and it limits my space and access in here. Plus, when I added the roof rack, I can no longer haul large items. You know, I can't forklift something in there unless it fits within this space, which for what I was using it at the time, it was totally cool. But I think I'm ready for a bit of an upgrade. And having the ability to, to, to do flatbed type hauling and tow a gooseneck, big heavy utility trailer, you know, for moving equipment around, is going to serve me much better. Here's the poor man's gooseneck mount plate. I'm going to bolt this to the frame, put a ball in here and some hooks, and then that'll be, that'll be the temporary gooseneck to pick up this trailer. Oh man, that is, that is toasted. Oh, there's the bolts. Let's get something in here. Oh man, this bed has seen better days. <sighs> Everything is soaked because the rain. I mean, it's disgusting. Okay, well, let's start pulling this. Let's start taking this thing off. So it's attached with two bolts there into the frame, two big through bolts there. And then there's a couple tack welds on this pipe uh, to keep it from sliding around that I'll have to grind off. And then once I disconnect the wiring, it should just lift right off. Oh, 
Oh, this is gonna be, it's gonna be like this. Uh, yeah, we're drilling these. Oh, that was disgusting and terrible. So we got two of these bolts that go into the bed here, uh, and then there's nuts on the bottom. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna get some wrench on here, and then I'll go underneath and, and try to get those off with the impact. There we go. While I'm under here, I have this whole mess of wires that I sort of jerry-rigged together into the frame. Let me get those out of here. <clears throat> I guess I got two more bolts up front. That bolt down there is a huge pain. What I recall, you put the wrench here. I don't know how this is supposed to be installed. How do you even get this? I just lost the socket up there. I have no idea how I got a bolt in there from underneath with the fuel tank in. That was a Christmas miracle. Oh my goodness. I, I don't know how I would have gotten that bolt off otherwise. Holy moly. So this is the opposite problem. This, this has the head up top. And the, uh, the nut below. And this, I remember this is like, this is closer to the cab. I can't get my, uh, I can't get my fat arm in here. So, uh, this might be, uh, hopefully this is another Christmas miracle situation. But at least there's no fuel tank under here. Oh. Nice coating of sludge. All right, here goes nothing. Oh, that's extremely. The last thing hooking this to the truck oh, is man, this. Last time I was working on this weatherproof conduit situation, drivetrain stuff. All the wires are clipped. I thought, oh, you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna stick tack a little bit of uh, weld to keep these from rattling around. All right, we just connected the bolts, the wires, and the fuel. I think this thing is ready to pop off, so I'm gonna rearrange its position. I got these fork extenders fabbed up the other day, and I think my plan is to put the forks through that top and try to lift it from the top there. Lemon squeezy. That really was easy. That's, I guess, what's good about having a forklift. Well, bed's off. So the dream machine has been through a lot. There's a lot of rust here. This is, um, this I got in New Jersey, so. You know, it survived. I, I remember this whole tire mechanism was completely trashed when I got it, but there's still a decent amount of metal under here, even though it's flaking off in some parts. So much of this truck has been replaced over the years, probably most of the back side of this. I, it had a new ex I put a new exhaust in, I put new springs, I rebuilt the differential with the, the, the locker, new shocks. I remember changing the straps for the fuel. 
this thing is this thing must be from the old it's all corroded oh, let's get this bolt out finally get my socket back there's a new fuel line in there I remember putting in I cleaned the tank when I changed the straps it's definitely uh, it's definitely an old truck what's the short term and the long term plan for this bed so short term we got to get these pieces of steel off. We're gonna fab up. I gotta just put together and drill a couple holes in here for the uh, temporary gooseneck. I gotta figure out the wiring situation, which this wiring has been, this wiring is in rough rough state. I basically have to find a new location for the, the hitch mount and cut off the wires. It's been, it's been just a disaster from the time I got it. Put on a new connection. That way I can plug in the new bed and the gooseneck trailer and then there's going to be a, there's going to be a bit of a rewiring situation once i once i take delivery of the bed i'm not going to i'm not going to rush to get it on here i'm going to put i have some wiring and some cameras i want to put in the bed and i really want to take the time to do it right because it's so easy to access things here right now i can run the wires i need and then when the bed's on it's going to be a pain to to take it off again um, also, I'll, I'm not gonna do this now, but before I put the bed on, I am gonna figure out how to clean this ridiculous frame, but maybe I'll degrease it, power wash it, and hit it with some sort of rust conversion paint, cause it's looking pretty rough here. I think the local tractor supply equivalent place they were selling these plates for like $300 that had the ball and the plate. It was just a solid plate over long, so I'd have to cut it down anyway. And I just asked the nice people at the steel place around the corner, hey, do you have a piece of channel? Can you pop a couple holes in it for me? And they were like, yeah, no problem. All right, before I bolt this baby down, I'm gonna assemble the, the ball and the, the safety chain hooks. I hope I left enough clearance on the safety chain things. That would be hilarious. That's probably about yay big. Famous last words. Oh, it just clears. Perhaps I forgot to get nuts. That's pretty funny. All right, I did forget to get nuts, but I have plenty in my stash. So let's uh, put some bolts on this bad boy. You know, you might be asking like, why am I using grade eight hardware on something that's temporary? And the answer is because I have to buy hardware anyway, and it's by the pound. And so for now I have the security of higher quality hardware and then I save it for the next project. I love this by the pound stuff. I mean, you just, it really is a good, good deal. I think I paid $7 for all this hardware. If you bought it by the, by the piece, it would be unbelievably. Oh man, that is on there. That is, that is, you know, it's temporary, but it looks pretty good, I think. Okay, so this thing's got to be somewhat legal. So I'm figuring out a bumper situation. I'll probably get a piece of steel or wood just to make a bumper and hang some mud flaps. And then for turn signals, I'm not going to do anything crazy. I got this cheapo kit from Harbor Freight. 
which I'll save afterward. It's just one of these towing kits. You know, they're magnets. Yeah, and that'll just plug into the to the trailer hitch plug, which I'll hook up. Oh man, look at this. I just snoo poking around in the barns on this property. Ugh. And there's a perfect piece of steel here to make a little temporary bumper. Oh, this is gonna be the epitome of hillbilly town. I'm, I'm really being affected by living in the Missouri countryside. I'm trying to make this look halfway presentable. I mean, it's gonna be hilarious. I'm gonna turn the camera off and think about this, get some lunch, and we'll see you in a second. All right, so decision is, yeah, I'm gonna pop this hitch off because it has to come off anyway. We'll drill two holes here, through bolt the hitch, uh, this bumper, and then the frame, and that should be a good temporary solution. I'll clean this up a little bit with a grinder, and then I'll grab some mud flaps from the, the auto parts store, and it'll look kind of legal. <laughs> I can only guess that uh, that was attached much later. I mean, I'm surprised these just popped right off. All right, let's clean up this bumper. Oh no, did I not record that? I think I forgot to hit record, but uh, I just basically ground off the surface rust, cleaned this up a teeny bit. I'm basically gonna cut a slot here that allows me to, to slide this in on top of the frame rail. That way there won't be anything in the way of the uh, the trailer hitch, and also then this this taper is not going to be in the way. If I if I bolt it up here now, this is going to tip forward and it's going to look like shit. Um, but if I if I sit it on this flat part, the washer will bend will will be at an angle, but the the bumper will sit cleanly. The redneckification is progressing nicely. So we got a bumper and we got to put some turn signals on here. I guess I'll just stick them on top of here. I'll probably grind this down a little bit so we have a nice clean metal surface. All right, I have running lights, that's cool. Let's try some turn signals. I have a turn signal. Yeah, this is exactly, this doesn't work on this side for some reason. Okay, well, at least we know what the problem is. Sweet, so now we got running lights and a license plate light. I need to figure out what's going on with the turn signal. 
Yes, I eventually figured out what was wrong with that turn signal, but it is not only out of the scope of this video, but there's nothing interesting in watching me slowly go insane. Long story short, there was a clipped wire halfway up the harness. I had water in my one of my fuse boxes from probably a hundred years ago. And there was a loose fuse clip in the main battery fuse box that I had to disassemble and pry back so that it was tight again. And while it sounds really simple to describe those three things, when they all three are happening at the same time, it's a huge, terrible pain to figure those things out. And I'm probably still recovering from that experience. So, uh... The turn signal works, and uh, I'm glad I know why. Well, I actually think this truck is in more of a legal condition than it was before I did all this stuff to it. I mean, because before, I don't think the turn signal in the back on this side worked. So now we got turn signals, we got mud flaps, we got a bumper. It didn't have a bumper before either. It was just the back of the, the toolbox. So I think it's in a temporary mode that is good. So I'm gonna just wash it down. I'm gonna wash the crud off of it and I'll make another video when I put the bed on. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.